I'll read. I'll take it from here. Verse Genesis 28, 10, probably to the end. Yaakov went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. He dreamed and saw a stairway set upon the earth and its top reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Okay. Very special. Nice little dream. He had a dream. Verse 13. Behold, Yahuwah stood above it and said, I am Yahuwah, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. I will give the land you lie on to you and to your offspring. Your offspring will be as the dust of the earth, and you will spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. In you and in your offspring, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I'm going to start with this. This is the continuation of what? Genesis 12, 3. All right. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who, who uh, treat you with contempt. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you, through Abraham. Genesis 18, 18. Genesis 22, 18, Genesis 26, verse 4. It's all passing on all the way till we get to Yahusha. Um, John 5, 46, for example, for if you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. Most people believe that Genesis was written around the time of Moses. There's some people that are not sure 100% who the author of Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus, Deuteronomy, but they associate it with Moses or around Moses' time. That's when the scriptures were penned down from what we see. Um, verse 13. Verse 15 of Genesis 28. Oh, wait, hold on, hand raised. Oh, got hand raised. Go ahead. As you? you? Think, yeah, but I think as he just took hers down. I had put it, I put it down. I don't want to be the dead horses. Okay, we can move on. Okay. Oh, was it a previous previous point or this this new point of this scripture we're reading now? Well, just about the seed again being in the land. I'm just wondering if because this land is reserved for the seed, maybe that's why you also don't take a wife from that land, from the land of Canaan, because it's supposed to be for him and his offspring and not, I don't know, just a thought, but we can move on. Well, in the future, Gentiles are welcome in the land. So again, mm -hmm. it, it, again, it, the topic, I can see how Genesis 28 gets misread. And, and these camps that are racist will run with Genesis 28 verses 1 to 9. They will use that as evidence. Oh, you see? But they miss the part where there's an inclusion in Israel in the kingdom. You know, uh, for goodness sake, there was a harlot that was allowed to live in Israel for, for allowing spies, you know, to... Now, okay, it doesn't go on and say that this woman married anybody. We don't know evidence of that, but I'm just... I'm just saying, you know, Gentiles were definitely welcome to be as an Israelite. Um, and I believe that being unequally yoked has more to do with who you worship and not necessarily your DNA. But like I said, as we read on, because this is a topic that requires you to go to different passages, as we read on, I will make sure, because I've done it before, we will, we will, we will highlight that. You, you, I won't hide it. I'll be get, I'll be very excited too. All right, go ahead, Milo. And also to Ezzy's point, right? This is early on, but not to mix all Gentiles with certain ones that were to be destroyed completely. Right. Right. So there were some that were literally to be wiped out. Right. And the only reason they were included was because Israelites sinned against Yahuwah. So, but we're but that trajectory we don't fully see right now because it's so early on. Um, but I, but I would agree, because think about it, like Yahuwah says he's given certain lands to, to, to the Moabites, which are the, um, from the seed of Lot, right? And that Israel was not supposed to touch that land, or that he says, don't touch this land because I've given it to Edom, to, to Esau's people. And so I understand Ezzy's point, as in he's trying to develop a place for Israelites, but obviously, yes, there's an inclusion, but it, it's, 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 it's multiple dynamics. But... Um, I also want to know, 
because you had mentioned before about Dario, um in a, like like the command of, of not marrying a wife was given from men, right? And so now we see the covenant, like Yisak gives this blessing, like another man, he's passing down this blessing. And we know that's still strong, mm -hmm. but now Yahuwah confirm, like officially confirms it. I mean, I think it would have been stood still in time anyway, but I think it's beautiful that Yahuwah confirms this covenant and repeats it himself within this dream, right? And that also- um, We didn't get there yet. Yeah, we did. We just read it, babe. I'm talking about the angels ascending and descending. You read all the way up to, uh, up to 14, right? Your offspring will be blessed and exactly. families of the earth will be blessed. Exactly. That's you who are talking. Yeah, but that wasn't about in not marrying Canaanites. No, no, no. I was like, I was just likening this idea of man saying one thing and now you who are confirming it. I wasn't saying the same, the same thing. Sorry, I miscommunicated. But what, um, help me understand because I'm kind of lost in, in thought here. What's the man gave, statement? The blessing that... Um, Okay, so I've taught that yes, I the seed Yisak, blessing, the seed blessing. Yeah, and that, that he's going to inherit this land. So that's what Yisak said, a man. That one didn't start with man. That one started with Yahuwah. I know, to but, Abraham, but I'm like, saying this time Yisak said to to Yaakov, it was a man giving, relaying this. Okay, to I was just trying to understand you. That's all. Yeah. That's I'm asking the question so okay. I can understand <laughs> what you. All right, so you're focusing on this chapter. Got yeah, it. Focus on this chapter. Got it. But then Yahuwah comes. And also confirms, yes, what yes. Yisak has said to Yaakov, I'm confirming to you okay. as well. Not regarding the marriage, but regarding... Right. Okay, I got mixed up with the topics. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, and also... Uh, oh, yeah. Can I just read verse 15 so, so I can get my verse 15 point out? <laughs> um, I see other hands up. I would like to go oh, to other okay, hands okay. first. Go ahead, go ahead. Derail? Mine's not really important, just come up to me. It is why in Isaiah, uh, Genesis 28, 13, so that the Masorites, they took out fear not when Yahuwah is talking to Jacob. He tells him not to fear. He says, fear not. And then he tells him, the land on which thou liest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed. I was kind of wondering, why would they take that out? Okay, the Septuagint has fear not. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I would, we would have to see if there's any other place in the mat, in the mat, which I believe there is in the Masoretic text. There's other places where messengers of Yahuwah will say fear not, I believe. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know why they would take it out when he talks to Yahuwah. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I don't think it's that big, but, um. No, it's not a big deal. I'm just kind of curious why they do that. No, it's a good observation. You're going to find that, uh, when it comes to Septuagint, Masoretic text. Yeah. Uh, Milo, you can read 15 and then go ahead with your point. And it says, and behold, I am with you and will guard you in all the places where you go and will bring you again into this land for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken. I just want to get the cross reference for that um, because you will promise that he's going to bring him back, him being Yaakov. And this is fulfilled in um, Genesis 35, Revelation 35, verses 1 to seven where I'm going to skim through where Yahuwah tells Jacob, you know, rise, go up to Bethel. We're going to see where the name comes from. Um, make yourself an altar there. And then Yaakov tells his people to put away the, I actually the foreign God. So we're going to get into this whole idea of idolatry um, later on. And he winds up traveling him being Yaakov back to this land here. So Yahuwah does fulfill what he promised in here. Yeah. All right. Verse 16, Yaakov awakened out of his sleep and said, surely Yahuwah is in this place and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, how awesome this place is. This is none other than God's house. And this is the gate of heaven. Yaakov rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on its top. Anybody like sleeping with uh, stones rather than a pillow? Nah, I'm good. Um, but he took that stone that he slept with and uh, set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Where's your outdoorsy spirit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I will find some leaves, some bushes, something. 
wrap it in a dead animal claw or something. Now, I, I'm allergic to animals, so that probably won't even work for me. I have to find a hypoallergenic animal of oh some goodness. sort. All right. Um, Yaakov rose up early in the morning. He poured oil on that stone that he slept on top of, his hard pillow. Uh, verse 19, he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz at the first. So it was called something else. And he decided to take it upon his own power. With Yahuwah's, you know, I guess his backing. Yahuwah's backing him up. I'm going to rename this spot. Prophetically, I'm stamping this place. I'm putting a, I'm putting, what do you call it? A stake in the ground. Yaakov vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, and Yahuwah will be my God, then this stone, which I have set up for a pillar, will be God's house. Of all that you will give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. So here is a command from Yahuwah to take over a specific territory on the planet of the earth. There is approval by Yahuwah to take over this land. Not like so-called Zionism or Christianity or Islam that tries to take over the entire planet and take over different countries under their own power. Not the same, okay? There is a difference here. All right, when Yahushua returns, when our king returns, then, we'll, then we can talk about, you know, taking over the earth and uh, him establishing kings and, and judges on the earth and everybody worshiping him. But uh, Yaakov is staying in line with what the promise is from Abraham through Isaac and now to him. Any thoughts? Who was first? Derail. You're muted. Cross reference for the uh, verse. What? You can't hear me? Yep, go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. I had a cross reference for uh, okay. Genesis. And Yaakov made a vow saying, seeing all he was with me, and he has kept me in his way, giving me bread to eat. And my. Connection is unstable. Can you guys yeah, hear me? Your connection's bad, brother. We're gonna have to move on. We're gonna move on. Ezzy, go ahead. Come on, see if you can come back on. Yeah, the only thing I was gonna say that stood out to me is um, what he's doing with the stone, where he's pouring oil on top of it and and naming this place. Um, it reminds me of when Yahusha or or Joshua Yahushua um, made a covenant with his people about putting away their false gods. This is in Joshua 24, um, starting in verse, I'm just going to start in verse 23. It says, and now put away the mighty ones of the stranger, which are in your midst and incline your heart to Yahuwah Elohim of Israel. And the people said to Yahushua, Elohim, uh, Yahuwah, our Elohim, we serve and his voice we obey. And Yahushua uh, made a covenant with the people that day and laid on them a law and a right ruling in Shechem. Then Yehoshua wrote these words in the book of the Torah of Elohim, and he took a large stone and put it up, and he put it up there under the oak tree that was by the temple of Yahuwah. And Yehoshua said to all the people, uh, see, this stone is a witness to us, for it has heard all the words of Yahuwah, which he spoke to us, and it shall be a witness against you, lest you lie against your Elohim. Um, so I'm just wondering, there's always the significance of the stone, and, and Yehusha is referred to as the cornerstone. Um, you know, in, in scripture, in the New Testament. And then you also have, you know, in the, in, in, um, in the Tanakh, you have people being stoned. There's a stoning. So you're getting blood on stones. You got oil being poured on stones. Now you have a stone being like a witness. So I'm just wondering the significance of, of, of the stone being like a witness, like what, cause we see that in scripture, but I'm just wondering what is that significance? What is the significance of the stone? I like, I don't know about the stoning people part, but I like the, <laughs> yeah, who should be in the stone? Yeah, who will be in the stone, right? The stone that the builders rejected, right? Uh, is a 
cornerstone, right? Cornerstone of what? Yahuwah's house, Yahuwah's temple, his kingdom, right? So Bethel means the house of God, mm -hmm. the house of El. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally like the connection you're making with, you know, being built on the rock and standing on the rock and Yahusha, Yahuwah, my foundation, things like that. I like it. He's, he's prophetically making a mark on the land. Um, all right, we have more hands come up after D-Rail. D-Rail will give you a shot again. Make sure you're on Wi-Fi and stuff like that and everything. Yeah, I don't know. I keep, I keep shutting me off Wi-Fi. Um, Genesis 28-20 made me think of Messiah, you know, as he gives us the bread and uh, the clo clothing of righteousness as we follow his way. We didn't read 20 yet. 28-20 he did. I read, I read up to 19, didn't I? I thought you read the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, you read all the way to sure. the end. That's where the stone, the stone is in verse 22. Right, my bad. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. I have, I have 19 highlighted. I remember me talking about, you know, anyways, go ahead. My bad. My bad, D-Row. No, it's all good. Well, it reminded me, uh, well, the cross-reference was Timothy chapter 6, verse uh, 8, where it says, when we have food and covering, we shall be satisfied with these. And to me, the Messiah, he's, you know, he's our food and he's our covering. You know, he gives us bread to eat. And he also tells us not to worry as long as you're on this path. In Matthew 6, 25 through 33, I'm just going to paraphrase, not to worry about what to eat, what to wear, and all those other things. That's what just made me think of that, that verse. Excellent. Excellent. I like it. Uh, Satan tries to get Yahusha to turn stones to bread. And he said, man does not eat by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah. I love it. Love the connections. Um, we don't got to worry, man. Uh, you know, as long as we have the truth, you know, whether I'm poor, yeah. whether I'm poor, whether I'm rich, I got the real food that sustains. Like he says in Deuteronomy, I shall never leave you nor, nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. Continue to stay on his way and his path. Yep. Amen. Good stuff. Um, let's go with Joshua. Give you a chance to jump in here. So, I just had a real quick question on something uh, that something that came to my mind. Um, when when we refer to Joshua the son of Nun, since since he had the same name, since he was Yahusha, do we call him Yahusha? Do we call him yeah. Joshua? Yeah, call him Yahusha. Yep. Yeah, we do that in this group. We try. We try. You know, I know sometimes I jump back and forth with the English translations with other people's names i don't like value it as high as yahusha's name but it's yeah it would be correct and appropriate to keep the transliteration of yahusha but definitely yeah um milo all right so a few things bethel let's look into the to some of the stuff of, um bethel right so we know that bethel means house of god and loose actually means almond tree uh, now, I think the place is significant again, and here's some cross-references. In Genesis 12, 8, Abraham built an altar east of Bethel, so not exactly in Bethel, but east of it, so around this surrounding area. Uh, in the future... And notice, notice, just real quick, just let me stop, I notice the saying. narration, just the way, just the way the writing of Genesis works. Look, look at the, look at the concept. Here, Bethel is being identified as Bethel before it was actually called Bethel. That's letting you know that somebody that was not alive during the time of Genesis was writing the book of Genesis retrospectively. You see that? I hope you guys saw I see it. So mm -hmm. I hope you guys saw it. Go ahead. And Genesis 31, 13, Yahuwah actually declares himself as the Elohim of Bethel. So I think it's interesting that he, he mentioned the stamp of approval. We don't necessarily see it here, but we do see it later where Yah says, I am the El of Bethel. Um, mm. And 35, in, in chapter 35, verses 1 to 7, Yahko returns safely to this place specifically. And we know that Yah... Uh, excuse me, that Yahweh vows that Yah will be, you know, his God if he returns. Um, in Yahusha 12, verses 7 to 8 and verse 16, the king of Bethel was actually smitten by Israel. 
in Yahushua 16, verses 1 to 4, this location became the inheritance of the tribes of Manashe and Ephraim. So this is going into the future. So we have this history where Yaakov walked on this land. He sets up a pillar. He anoints it. He's going to come back and actually build an altar on it. And this, this particular part of the land is going to go to the tribes of Manashe and, and Ephraim, the sons of Yosef. And we also see where there's some downfalls in Bethel. In 1 Kings 12, verses 26 to 30, Yisrael actually sinned with Jeroboam because they built, um, I don't know if you remember the story, but essentially Jeroboam was a king of, of Israel, and he wind up making two golden calves, and he put one in Dan, and he put one where? In Bethel. So you have this place mm. that's supposed to be the house of Elohim, that Yahuwah calls himself, I am the God of Elohim. There's anointing here, there's there's prophecies, there's, there's some powerful that, things that happen here. And then you have some of the Israelites just completely going away and committing idolatry. They said, Merry Christmas. Basically. <laughs> and in Amos uh, 3.14, Yahuwah speaks against Israel, actually, and says the altars that are built up from sin and Bethel will be brought down. So I think that's important because we're just going to see in, the, in this land, there's going to be both blessings that come and, and this and this you know, beautiful prophecies, but also sin mm -hmm. because of our forefathers. Mm. And the last thing was, I don't know if anybody caught it, but it says Yaakov says he will give a tenth to Yah. Mm. And this is, there's only mm -hmm. one other time beforehand that mm -hmm. a tenth is mentioned, and mm -hmm. that's when Abraham gives a tenth to Melchizedek. And I think mm. it's very interesting that he's mentioning this aspect of a tithe. I'm going to give you a tithe to Yahuwah. Um, I don't know where this has been fulfilled, to be honest. I was trying to figure out and trying to remember, like, is there somewhere specific where it mentions that he does it? So that is something I'm going to look at. But it is interesting that he brings up this concept of a tithe again to Yah. Mm. Excellent. This is before the law of Moses mm -hmm. and the command to give a tenth or tithe to the Levites so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. So here's the concept of tithing to Yahuwah, predating the law of Moses or the giving of the law. Okay. I think that's a very valid point. What does that, what does that say? What does that mean? Yeah. It means a lot. It means that this is not limited to the book of the law. This concept of giving Yahuwah a tenth of our, uh, our increase, you know, so that makes us think, you know, like, Again, I know Christianity, this is the part they like to keep, and they put the tenth towards the organization, right? Um, to a degree, right? I mean, when, when they tied, they tied to the Levites. The Levites were in charge of the temple, so everything had to do with the temple, the construction, the, the growth of the construct of the Israelite place of worship, and, and much more, right? Taking care of the poor and doing things like that. But there is this concept, man, that we should value uh, our Yahuwah enough to take a portion of our increase and dedicate that to Yahuwah. Whether it be helping a brother out, helping a sister out, or doing something for somebody, or, yeah, definitely investing into your assembly, wherever you're assembling, so that the growth of your assembly can, can grow and it's bigger than that. It's for the kingdom of Yahuwah. So, but that, that's definitely, for me, it stands out. I wasn't even looking at that, honestly. But to me, it's, it shares that like, there's, 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 there's a value to this, ten, this tithing concept that predates Moses. And the Abraham Melchizedek situation. Here, here he's saying, I'm giving this to Yahuwah. I'm giving a tenth to Yahuwah. And that sounds like continually, right? Um, of all that you will give me, sounds like, um, often. as you provide for me, Yahuwah, as you prosper me, as you, right, I'm going to give you back 10%. I, I don't know, man. That's, that sounds great to me. Um, anybody else? Jeff? Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at cross-references on the stone pillars, and in every case where they're used, they're meant as a memorial for permanence, right? It's something that's meant to be remembered longer than that person's life. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, for instance, um, in Second Samuel, it says in 1818, now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's valley. 
for he said, I have no son to preserve my name. So he named the pillar after his own name, and it is called Absalom's Monument to this day. Mm. And so it was meant for permanence of things that were meant to be remembered beyond someone's lifetime. Nice. Such as a stoning. Because if I witness the stoning, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> to shake, to shake. I like that the commandments. I like that the commandments were in stone. I like that, that our Messiah is called a, a stone or a rock of offense, you know? I like, uh, I like the permanence of the idea of a stone, you know? It's, it's something that's never meant to be forgotten. Nice. Then, but that brings up a very, sorry, go ahead, Dio. I was gonna say that a stone is a judgment being passed on to you and you're being stoned to death. Messiah being a rock, he's going to come to judge us one day. That's true. That's true. All right. I guess that rede you redeemed that stoning concept as he brought up. You redeemed it. You, 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 you redeemed it. You resurrected it. It's got some value. <laughs> All right. I like, that. I like that. Yeah. They stand as a, as a witness, right? So, for example, so if that stone was still there, that pillow was there, all the, you're supposed to pass down the knowledge of it, right? Like it doesn't, it's not like you just pass by this rock and you're like, oh, okay, it's a rock. No. What should be happening then is the generation should be talking to the next generation and saying, this is what this represents. So, for example, when the half-tribe of Manashe, okay, I can set my service in a second when I have to get it, but when the half-tribe of Manashe, um, and I think, it, and I forget the other half-tribe, stayed, they didn't go into the promised land. You know what they did? They built an altar on the opposite side of the Jordan River. And then people were upset saying, what are you doing? Like, why in the world are you building this? Like, why are you sacrificing that? You need to come onto our side to sacrifice, blah, 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 blah. And they said, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. We're not doing this to sacrifice. We're specifically doing this so that when our generations come after us, they know that by looking at this structure and matches that structure over there, we are one. We are of the tribes. We are of your people. You are to remember us from generation to generation to generation because they, the, they weren't technically in the promised land, right? So when I think about here's this pillar, you, you know, Dero and Ezi was, and Jeff, you're making me think, like, here's this pillar that was anointed and how this should have been passed down, this concept of this is the house of Yahuwah. This is the house of Elohim for the Israelites generations later to then build a golden calf, one, they should have noted, noted that the golden calf was already made and Yehoah wanted to kill their people, but they decided to do it twice and this should have been a remembrance. So it's just very, that's good stuff. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Joshua, do you have something? Uh, I did. I don't remember what it was. All right. I'm going to, my last statement, I think, my last statement on this is going to be this. Look at Yahuwah's mercy and compassion on Yaakov. Where his last occurrence was deception. And he's running now uh, because of the lies that he did. I think it should be noted that Yahuwah is showing mercy to him, to Yaakov, and showing value on the covenant that was passed from Abraham, right? That Yahuwah gave to Abraham, passed on to Isaac, and now on to Yaakov. But it shows like, to me, it shows Yahuwah's compassion. Yaakov don't, doesn't deserve this, you know, to a degree, you know, for the way that he deceived his father. But Yahuwah is uh, being kind anyways. So just an observation. All right, we will end with that. Genesis 28, that was uh, 10 to 22, Shalom.